Welcome back to lesson three in learning JavaScript on the Now platform. My name is Chuck Tomasi. Let's get started. Now, creating variables is one of the most common things you will do in almost any programming language. And variables are, are simply a storage place to put data in memory. That's really all it is. And in JavaScript, there are two main types of variables. There are primitive variables and complex variables. Primitive, obviously, being very simple. You can, you can uh, put in a number, whether it's an integer or a floating point number. You can put in booleans of a true and false value. And you can put in strings of characters, which we call strings, for things like a name. Let's take a look at how some of these work. I am going to, once again, go to my repository full of good lesson information and get lesson three, script one from the script. And you can find that again at our GitHub repo available at the bit.ly link you see there. So put that away. And I'm going to go through this line by line. This is, again, lesson three, script one. I can declare a simple string variable in this first line var name. Var is the keyword we tell ServiceNow and tell JavaScript we want to declare a variable. If you miss the var, you can get into trouble. It may appear to be working, but it changes the meaning of what that variable is and does. And am I using my variable? Am I using somebody else's? It's called scope, and we're not going to get into that right now, but it can be dangerous. So when in doubt, always use the var keyword. I've missed it in the past in some strange situations and weird things happen. So var name chuck, any string is enclosed in single quotes or double quotes. I will be talking more about strings in a little bit. So that's going to be coming up. Uh, it, for now, single quotes, double quotes, doesn't matter. Just be consistent. Whatever you start with, you end with. Here's one var i equals zero, I'm creating a variable called i, which holds the obviously the value zero. This is an integer variable. And then the next line, whoop, sorry about scrolling, next line var answer equals true. True is not in quotes. It is a known keyword. You can even see it's colored differently on this video. It is blue, meaning this editor recognizes a JavaScript keyword. It is a Boolean value, true or false, on or off, one or zero. This is how Booleans are stored as true or false. You'll see these keywords again, no quotes. Otherwise, it would be storing a string value. Now, when it comes to naming, naming your variables is pretty important in JavaScript because you want to be able to look at this script later and understand exactly what it did, why you used it, what that variable means, maybe even a little insight as to how it's being used. If I create a variable like this one, var c equals http d d d d amazon.com. Looks like a URL, but if I see it later in the code where it says, you know, what is the length of C? I'm going, what was C again? C doesn't exactly jump out at me and say, this is a URL. This is a homepage. C is not an ideal variable name. Technically, it will work, but it's not ideal. A better is something like, oh, this should actually be case. And if I say case, it's going to give you a warning and say, no, you can't do that. Case is a reserved word. And we will be talking about that again in a future lesson. But it's important to recognize some of these reserved words like var. Don't call a variable var. Var is a reserved word. So if you said var var, it's going to get confused. So case is not good. I could then fix that by using something like this. And this is known as camel case, where it starts out lower, and then I use the first letter of each successive word to denote the case of that word. I Some people will do all uppercase. Some people, If you've got a, a uh, programming guideline, a JavaScript style guide that you use at your organization, please use that. And if it varies from what you see here, I'm okay with that. If you don't have a style guide, I'm going to show you some common styles like camel case that are used in a lot of scripts that you'll see in service now and that I have learned over the last 35 years of, of writing software. So Java, uh, excuse me, 
case number is a good way to do this. I'm going to store it this way so that the comment, everything after the slash slash, makes sense with what you see here. Now, here's another one that's a very, very long. Last entry in the list with related records equals true. While very descriptive, I don't want to be the poor programmer that has to type this every time, and it may be used multiple times in your script. So that's probably not going to be ideal. It's, it's just really long. Uh, some other examples of good variable names. You may have a variable that appears a number of times in your script. I've run into this where I've got a person represented in a record I retrieved from the database. I've got a person that is counting how many people are in there. I've got, and just calling your variable person or person X or person Y or person one or person two, putting simple suffixes on your variables is not going to tell you how it works. So what I've learned fairly recently is that it often pays to just put the data type, the variable type on the end of that. For example, person count or person int would work for that to indicate I am counting here. This is what this is about. Person list could be an array or one of those complex data types that we'll talk about. Person obj is an object. Person gr is a glide record. It's a record I got from the database. So it often helps to put those on there. And that way, when you have multiple pieces, multiple variables doing something very similar, but in a different context, this one's counting, that one's a database record, this one's an, a list of what I've counted, you can easily tell your variable types apart from one another. So that is the quick and dirty lesson about variables, how to declare them the simple primitive data types that are available, again, strings, numbers, whether they're integers or floats, and uh, Boolean data types. And we will see those in action in upcoming videos. So until then, I look forward to talking to you on the next video where we're going to be talking about mathematical operators. We're going to do some stuff to those numbers that we store in the variables. I'll talk to you then. Take care.